I got a question. Who told you that Christianity, the religion, listen to me very closely because if you don't listen to me real closely, you're going to get offended. But who told you that Christianity was the way to God? It was the religion that you thereby use or the vehicle thereby you use to get to God. Because when you really truly look at it, not for what people tell you or what they allegedly represent, but when you look at it in function and in truth, because Jesus did say that the true worshipers will worship him in spirit and in truth. If you would just pick up that Bible and read it for yourself, you're going to find out that the greatest cure for Christianity is reading the Bible. Because once you start reading that Bible, using self-autonomy, you're going to find out that what they say and what they do is totally contrary to what the book says and what is represented. I'll give an example. There are three main pillars to Christianity, three of them. If, if we just collapse one pillar, then the whole thing is false and it comes down. Is that true? Sure it is. What are the three main pillars? Christmas, Easter, and Sunday. I dare you to pick up your Bible and see if you can find any laws, any, any instructions, any rules, or any guidelines to where not only the Israelites 5,000 years ago was celebrating and doing this stuff, Go back 2,000 years ago and see what the Messiah said himself. See if he participated in any of these tenets. And then even after the Messiah, go to the apostles. Because after all, uh, the foundation is built upon the apostles and prophets with Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. See if they recognize or knew this new religion that has been in existence for just about 1,700 years. See if they knew anything about it or said anything about it. You will be amazed how deep the deception goes. Well, what do you believe, Pastor? Well, I believe that Satan created. I believe that he said, if you can't beat him, you join him. And that's what happens when you have an understanding of history. It would be something if we could find that Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, uh, David, Solomon, uh, Jesus, Peter, James, John, Paul, if we could ever see them at any time saying that they were a Christian, then we could believe it. If we could see that the Christians of today would obey what the book says, then we could believe it. But we don't see that. In its purest sense, the um, title Christian, the term Christian, or the definition Christian, whichever way you want to see it, believe it, and comprehend, understand it, means follower of Christ. I've been living on this earth 52 years. I still have not yet met one Christian till this day. Even still till today. I, I know what people say that they are. I know what people call themselves, but in function, I've never met one. If you see one, show them to me or show her to me so I can test to see if they are what they say they are. Because Paul who Christians like to tout of that personal apostle, said in, on many, many occasions that he was a Hebrew of the Hebrews, said he was an Israelite. Said not only was he an Israelite, his association was with the tribe of Benjamin, and he even said he was circumcised the eighth day. So I, I think that out of their own mouth, they knew pretty much what they were or who they were. Jesus even said that he didn't even come to save Christians, but he came to save the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Over in Exodus, the fifth chapter, he even says that the creator universe is the God of the Hebrews. So how did this religion that is diametrically opposed, opposed in every single way to what the actual word says, how did it become the largest religion in the world, which I do know the answer to that too, and how is, is it that it has so much influence that it has literally flooded the market of religion to make everybody think that just because they say Jesus. Well, Paul even spoke about that too. He told, told you that people will come and preach another Yahshua, another Messiah, another Jesus. 
They say you can bear with them, but don't believe them boogers. Man, I tell you, the deception, and that's, that is the way of the anti-Messiah, deception. The deceiving and the deception is real. Then what's amazing to me, they are the largest cult in the world, and they have the arrogancy and the audacity on the mitigated gall to call those of us who believe in obeying what the word says a cult. <laughs> it's really, truly laughable when you know what the word says. So I don't blame many Christians, especially their theologians. They didn't go to school to learn what Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and the uh, prophets and the apostles said. They went to school to learn what John Calvin, uh, what John Wesley, what Martin Luther, what Tertullian, Ignatius, Origen, Marcion. Uh, they went to learn what they had to say. And they called that first century religion or Christianity because what they represent is so far from what you read in that Bible. It is amazing the mental gymnastics they can do in it, isn't it with that book. They can turn around and tell you something that what that book says and um, interpolate at least what they think what the book says and they got this whole world believing in their interpretation. They even make up arguments that ain't even there. They even come up with questions that ain't even biblical. I mean, the book says foolish and unlearned questions are void because the only thing they're going to do is cause strife and contention. Well, anyway, I know I sound like a sore thumb out of joint in the midst of this generation right here that's so religiously in charge. You know, charged. They really believe that because they're conservatives or they're liberals that they have a leg to stand on. Listen, I am speaking only from the perspective of what the Bible says. There's no need in getting upset. Just do what the book says do in 1 Thessalonians 5.21. It says, prove all things, test all things, and hold fast that which is good. Now, I don't believe that you should swallow stuff hook, line, and sinker just because your family has always believed it. That doesn't mean it's right. I dare not, and I have not followed the religion of my family in any way, shape, fashion, or form because it wasn't right. I believe what they said when I was a child, but when I became a man, I could use self-autonomy for myself. I could use my own independent thinking. I could research things. I could study things out for my own self. I come to find out that since we do have only one life to live, and then when we get finished with this, the way we have lived this life is gonna determine, and who we obey is gonna determine what we're gonna spend all of eternity. And make no mistake about it, the things that we say and do, they will echo throughout all of eternity. I come to find out that somebody was toying around with my only soul, and I took offense to it. And I became a student of that word. As a matter of fact, November the 17th, 2018, I will be in Green Bay, Wisconsin. I'll put more information out a little bit here later. I'm actually going to be debating a theologian on the very tenets or the main pillars of Christianity, at least two of them, Christmas and Easter. We'll see what the Bible has to say. We'll see if anybody in the Bible did these things. Isn't that beautiful? I actually have a theologian that is actually willing to have a debate with me on this. Unbelievable. Because in the history of me being the pastor straightway, Everyone that started out that way after they go and do some investigation, they all have backed down. From California to Texas to North Carolina, all of them have backed down. This one seems like that um, he is bold as a lion, or at least righteous enough to actually have this discussion or debate. Hope to see you and you there. We're going to do what we can to actually broadcast it live too as well. The only thing I'm doing this morning is trying to stimulate thought. That's what I'm trying to do. Because there's only one truth in this world. And that truth is Jesus. Y'all sure I'm a shit. All right. Hey, I said enough. Got a wonderful day. You're going to find out that I'm not your enemy. I love you enough to tell you the truth. <laughs>